have this flawed tendency to place their faith in someone who will wield power on their behalf against their perceived enemy. Now the problem with this is that we've been trying this for thousands of years. I think the first recorded war was around 4000 BC and we have not fixed the world with it yet. So this passage talks about a thief. A thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Who is the thief? Is my question. Well, the thief is not Satan come to deceive you away from the faith through sex, drugs, and rock and roll. No, the thief is actually anyone that promises blessing by another way than Christ's way. Now, that can be a religious leader asking for your money so they can buy a new private jet. That can be a political figure promising to annihilate the other side uh, if you give them your boat. That can be a boss promising you a raise if you cheat that client a little bit that benefits your company. That could be a fundamentalist asking you to go against the grain of your own inner integ integrity just to conform to their standards. The thief comes in many different forms and it promises you greatness. All you have to do is sacrifice some part of your soul to it, your integrity, your character, your belief. Now the thief promises life to you and the world, but steals it from you instead. And we often don't notice it because we blame it on those people. The thief is anyone who promises the same spiritual blessings that Christ is promising, but without giving of themselves for the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The thief comes in by some other door, not the one of self-sacrifice, but promises to use then violence on our behalf, this is not how it works. That's the thief. Spiritual writer Evelyn Underhill said this, the only true guide is the shepherd who has gone before and who knows the pitfalls and the way. And the way that our shepherd has gone is through death via humility and self-sacrifice. And he sanctified that way for us and we follow it in the same manner. And anything that does not look or act like the Christ of the Gospels is a thief come to steal, kill, and destroy with false promises. The pitfalls Evelyn here speaks of are common, everyday greed, pride, envy, violence, lust for more, and all the other things that seem to make a lot of money and grant us a lot of power. Now, there's this figure in the Old Testament called Molech. It was one of the idols that the Israelites worshipped. And Molech is actually an embodiment of everything we're talking about. In Jeremiah 32, it talks about how the people of God are so enamored with the allure of power that they sacrifice their children in exchange for this promised power. Now we're thinking like, oh my God, they're crazy. But these weren't bloodthirsty pagans. These were the people of God who believed that this was what was required to make the world right. And God actually says, don't you think I can do this? Is anything too hard for me? No, but no, you gotta go and trust in evil and corrupt leaders and their demands, and it costs you your kid's future. This is actually called the Molech Principle today. The nuclear arms race was like the same thing. It's a rush to get the destructive power before someone else gets it and wield it upon the world, right? And now we have nuclear arms all over the place. We can destroy the entire planet with the push of a button. And climate change is the same thing. It's the refusal to cut greenhouse gases as a company because the other company might outperform you by not cutting them so you can't cut because they're not going to cut. And this is just one big race to the edge of a cliff. And God promises that we don't need to put our trust in violence or someone who promises to wield violence on our behalf in order to make the world right. God already died to make the world right and no one else needs to. This is the hardest part of faith, I think, is trust that doing things God's way can actually bring about God's ends. That's the most difficult part of the faith, is to believe that that works. But as Desmond Tutu said, when we surrender, we release our grip on our own lives and allow something greater to take over. 
And this is the hope our faith gives us. Not that if we do everything right, tragedy is going to skip over us and then riches are going to fall down upon us. Instead, the promise is if we can pray and act, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we might find pasture. Christ is the gate. We have to go through him. And he actually showed us how by modeling this way of being.